Are you struggling to find deals that make sense out there? The market is changing, the economic climate is uncertain, and finding ways to invest and create cash flow is difficult. Well, stick around with me because I want to show you a method that you can use to help generate more cash flow and hopefully build more wealth for you and your family. So stick around. Hey family, what's going on? Henry Washington here and welcome to the On The Market YouTube channel presented by Fundrise. If you've been following this series, you know I've been trying to show you different strategies that you can use to invest even given the current market climates. And if you want to go check out any of the videos in that series, please check out the links in the description. We've talked a lot about different methods that you can use. We've talked about how to get money to buy deals even in this crazy climate. And so there's tons of good information in there go check it out and as always if you're enjoying this series if you're enjoying this content please don't forget to like and subscribe so that we can keep getting you awesome content and as always you can follow me i'm at the henry washington on instagram so we know finding deals that cash flow in this crazy market is is tough, right? Even though the market is slowing down, deals are still selling and they're still selling for record prices. So finding something out there that actually makes you money as an investment can be difficult. And when things like this happen, you need to start thinking of what are some other strategies? How can I pivot my strategy in order to find something that still makes financial sense? So today we're going to talk about the ever popular topic of short-term rentals and short-term rentals we're using kind of as an umbrella term but when we talk about short-term rentals we're really going to talk about three specific types of short-term rentals we're going to do obviously the short-term rentals which are rentals that are 30 days or less we're going to also talk about mid-term rentals and those are rentals that are about one year or less and then we'll also talk about what I call the super short-term rentals or you can call them hourly rentals and uh I think you'll find some interesting information when we start to cover that because that could be a great additive to any of these other strategies. So when you're thinking about short term rentals and we'll start there, think about buying property that you intend to rent out furnished at a daily rate. And yes, this is a real estate strategy, but it's also the hospitality industry. All right, I get it. You know what short-term rentals are. You're excited about it. You want to look for one, but you have no idea where to look. One of the best places to gather information about short-term rentals is short-term rental property managers. Short-term rental property managers are a new business that lots of people have gotten into as the popularity of short-term rentals has increased. And so now there are companies out there who specialize in managing other people's short-term rentals. These companies are gonna have great data on what areas of town produce the best nightly rates on what features or amenities that the properties have that produce the best nightly rates are. They're going to have information on what types of either furniture or mattresses you should put into your property that people are really enjoying or liking. You can get tons of key information. You can learn about what are the best neighborhoods, right? What are the best amenities that people are traveling to the area to come and take part in? And so if you want to start looking for property that you're going to use for a short term rental, the first thing I would do is start calling around and speaking to these short term property managers. Some things to consider or be aware of as you're looking to do a short term rental strategy is yes, it can produce more cash flow because you're getting a nightly rate but you also have more expenses. There are things that typically a tenant would pay for if it were a long-term tenant that now you as the owner of the short-term rental are gonna have to cover. Some of those expenses that you were gonna have to consider taking care of is lawn care and yard maintenance. You're also gonna have a cable bill or a internet streaming service bill. You're also gonna have internet costs. That's something that you wouldn't typically have as a long-term rental. And you're also gonna cover Cover all of the utilities. Utilities are a big expense when you're talking about a short term rental. Some other expenses to think about are the hospitality items or items that need to be replenished over time. People are going to use toilet paper. They're going, your cleaners are going to use cleaning supplies. Uh, people are going, you're going to have to pay for laundry detergent and all of these other things that 
uh, are going to get used up. And so you, as the owner of the property, are going to have to pay to resupply your property. You're also going to have the fees that the listing service is going to require you to pay. So you've got the fees Airbnb charges, the fees VRBO charges, or any other platforms that you're using that you need to factor into your expense line items, as well as property management if you're going to have professional property management. All right, next we're going to talk about midterm rentals. Now, midterm rentals is similar to short-term rentals, because it still involves you renting out a furnished place. But typically, the midterm rental is going to be for 30 days at a time or more. So it's any lease less than typically a year lease, um, but you're renting it month by month. And what that can demand is you can still get a higher daily rate because you're providing a furnished place and you're providing it on a shorter period of time. And when you're providing it on a shorter period of time as a property owner, that means you're going to have turnover. Turnover can be more costly for you. And so you charge more per month or per day because you're taking on a strategy that has high turnover. Now, this has become a more popular strategy since 2020 because people who like to now travel, live in different areas of the country, experience different places while they're still working their job. And so you have lots of different customer bases that you can consider renting to. Some of those customer bases, like I said, are traveling professionals. You also have traveling nurses. This is probably the largest niche of people who like midterm rentals because traveling nurses, they get paid well and they want a comfortable place to live because they work long long, hard hours. You also have some students who like midterm rentals, especially graduate students who may not be in the area for very long, working on some sort of specialized degree. And another demographic of people are people who are building a house. A lot of the times people are building a house that isn't ready yet, but they've already sold the house that they're currently living in. And so they're in this limbo phase for one to six months where they need a place to live and they don't want to have to live in a hotel or even an Airbnb. So there are tons of different people in different situations that they would look to rent a midterm rental. And it's frankly not a huge niche from an investor standpoint. There's not a lot of people who cater specifically to this niche. And so it makes it a great option for you to go ahead and purchase property or turn property that you currently have into something that can be used as a furnished midterm rental. Some things to think about when doing midterm rentals are typically the applications or platforms that you would use to book people to stay at your midterm rental. They aren't going to supply the contract. So that means you and the tenant will still have to work out the contract. It's still typically going to be on you as the owner to vet that tenant properly. And so you want to make sure that you know how to do your due diligence on vetting the proper person to live in your place. You'll also want to think about some of those same expenses that we talked about from short term rentals. You're still going to have to pay for the lawn care and you're probably going to have to provide some sort of internet cable plus all of the other utilities that come with owning that property are going to be paid for by you so you want to factor those into your midterm rental strategy one of the best apps that you can list your property on in order to book midterm rental tenants is furnishfinder.com. That's probably the most popular. There's tons of other ancillary ones out there. And so you'll need to do some research on those and make sure that it makes sense for you to list your property on that platform, depending on your market. Some super pro tips when it comes to midterm rentals is go and talk to any larger corporations in your network or in your area who are moving people there to work for that company. Those companies may be looking for people to provide housing or corporate housing for the executives or other people in that company who they are flying into town to work for short periods of time. Another place you can look for more midterm rental bookings is talk to different nonprofit organizations in your area. There's tons of different nonprofits who work with tons of different people who they may need to provide 
short-term or mid-term housing to, like there are organizations who work with abused women or organizations who worked with children who need a place to stay. There's organizations that work with people who are recently getting out of jail who need a place to stay. And a lot of the times they don't have these places already lined up and having access to someone or some business who readily has housing available for them to use is a benefit to them. And so you might be able to get yourself a contract with one of these type of organizations to consistently provide housing for them. All right, and the third strategy we wanna talk about is the super short-term rental or the hourly rental. And this is a strategy where you can rent out not only just a furnished house, but maybe just a furnished room in a house or a furnished room in an office or an apartment building. This strategy allows you to rent small spaces hourly to people or companies who need a furnished space or a decorated space to do things like shoot TV commercials, do photo shoots, do job interviews. There is a plethora of reasons why somebody would want to rent a cool space or a unique space to do these different things. One of the main platforms people are using to book spaces hours at a time is an app called PeerSpace. And with PeerSpace, you as the owner can provide a furnished space that someone can then rent for whatever use that they have. And what I love about this strategy is you don't have to rent a whole space. So even if you could do this with the current home that you live in, maybe you have a well-decorated office space that you don't utilize too much. Well, you can list that office space on peer space and somebody who wants to come and film some short video photography or commercial or something could rent your office space to do that. So I really like this method as a supplementary method to the short-term and long-term rental strategies because with those strategies your place is already furnished and if your place is already furnished if you've got some vacancy or some dates that your place isn't booked in between the months well you can list that property on peer space and help generate income during those vacant periods so jump on peer space see if that's a good addition for you to add to your monthly income because now you can fill vacancies an hour at a time and produce great income. So what did you think about that super short-term strategy? Is that something you'd heard of before? Is that something you've done before? Leave some comments below. I'd love to hear who's actually used that super short-term strategy before. All right, let's talk quickly about some of the risks involved with the short-term rental, mid-term rental strategy. Well, some of the major risks are it's not widely accepted everywhere yet, meaning that that the different cities and municipalities do have the power to change the rules and either make these things illegal or add additional fees that you may not be thinking you have to spend. And so you wanna make sure you do your due diligence. Talk to the property managers in those areas who are working with short-term rentals and they can give you some information on which areas are most okay with it, which areas aren't. And then talk to those cities and find out what types of hoops you're gonna have to jump through to get approved to do short-term rentals in that area. And also find out if there are any additional taxes you're going to have to pay. To be safe, you want to make sure that you're buying property that you know would make money as a short-term rental, but if you had to pivot on a dime, would you be able to then also make money as a long-term or would you be able to sell it as a profit? And so if you're buying a property and you're buying it at a price point where you know there's some equity in it so that if you had to sell, if you weren't allowed to make the short-term money anymore and you could sell it for a profit, that's great. That's two exit strategies. And so you also want to take a look at what are the long-term rental rates for these properties that you're buying and you're considering doing short-term rentals. At least understanding what the long-term rental rates are helps you understand if you're buying a property at a price point where you're not gonna lose your shirt if you had to convert it to a long-term rental. Other things I like when you're looking at this to, to alleviate your risk is to look to buy short-term rental properties in areas where short-term rental has been a thing before Airbnb was really a popular thing. And so there are tons of different places in the country that are tourist destinations that have always been tourist destinations and they've always had short-term rentals, even before Airbnb. Typically these areas, their economy is built on 
people traveling to that area. And so the likelihood of them changing rules on you to not allow short term rentals is a lot less because their economy has been built around that. So it's like you get a little bit of a built in safety net. Does that mean things won't change? No, it doesn't mean that. It just means that they might be a little less likely to change. And so it might be a bit of a safer play. All right, folks, there you have it. We talked about three different short term rental strategies that you can use to increase your cash flow. In this crazy time, we talked about traditional short term rentals. We talked about midterm rentals and we talked about the super short term hourly rental. So what's your strategy? Do you have any short term rentals? Have you done any of these methods before? I'm really, really curious to know if anybody's done any midterm rentals. Talk about it in the comments below. I bet people will get value from hearing from others who are doing it. As always, please, please like and subscribe to this channel. Like this video. We would love to keep showing you awesome content to help you improve as a real estate investor. And as always, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at the Henry Washington on Instagram. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you learned something. I hope you were out there investing and growing your portfolio even through these economic times. And as always, we'll see you at the closing table.